Hello everyone, this is Rocky Reyes back with another tutorial series and I'll be talking about Conva.js framework which has been created by Anton Labrinov and has been under for the development by several other people. <coughs> so I'm from 23 Yards and I go by the name Narayan as well. So today I'll be talking about basic usage and the basic uh, overall a brief overview on Conva.js, how it works and all that. So let's get started. So Conva.js is a 2D HTML5 canvas framework. So what this essentially means is that it creates canvases on which we can draw several elements like a square, a rectangle, a star or any other custom shape that you would uh, like to draw. You can animate them as well. You can make them interactive as well. So this is where I think I like it better than the other ones which I have dealt with uh, before. So interaction is something uh, pretty important. So in this uh, digital age, uh, we need uh, two-way interaction rather than just presenting elements to the uh, viewers and visitors. So when you start interacting uh, with the applications, uh, it actually makes you more engaged to the website you're on and I guess uh, Conva.js is a pretty good uh, framework that achieves all this uh, and uh, to go further ahead I'll talk about how the structuring of Conva.js layers and uh, the stages are done but before that I'll also try, I'd like to mention that there is animation support in Conva.js and there is tweening as well in Conva.js and for the O programmers, that is object oriented programmers, this will be amazing because most of the uh, programming done is uh, it supports OOPs. So, also there is uh, support for dragging as well. So, you can drag around elements uh, and interact with them as I was mentioning previously. So, the first step you, you have to uh, do is you have to copy down the link uh, for the script so let's get started with our tutorial so all right so I have uh, the, uh, the link open over here I will share this uh, link with you guys on this description below or else you can find it out in the Conva.js website which I'll put up in the description as well so once you go over there and click on download you uh, you'll see this page and when you uh, uh, open up JS Fiddle or your local editing um, text editor whichever you would like to use like Emacs or let's say Sublime Text but I would suggest uh, JS Fiddle because it can uh, bring together all of these uh, frameworks uh, all of these uh, windows right in front of you so that you can work on them on real time so let's get started so the first thing, first step you do is attach a script and give a script uh, source which will be our link that we just copied. So I have just copied the link and pasted it over here. So this is my script and I am almost done. So this is how I will be linking the Conva.js framework uh, within our uh, working system. So this is how you link both of these uh, end to end. After this, you always need to create a division element. So, division elements, uh, as you might have seen in my other videos as well, like I have made another tutorial on dy graphs. I have made another tutorial on uh, on SVG JS as well, where I talk about SVG elements, how to animate them as well. So, if you see in that, uh, the procedure is the same as with several other JS uh, frameworks and libraries. You need to uh, create a division element and give an ID so that that ID is used by the JavaScript to insert whatever it is drawing into back into the division element. So essentially how this works is that you create a div element and give it an ID. Uh, over here you might have to give the ID as container but you can give it anything that you would li uh, like to call. But there is a uh, general uh, naming uh, rules, naming regulation that is followed. It's not a rule but it's a recommendation. Anyways, uh, we won't be writing much code in this tutorial, I'll be just explaining what works in what way. So we'll be talking about uh, the other functions in the next tutorial. 
So after this division ID is done, you are actually almost done with the HTML part of the uh, work that you are required to create. So essentially the, uh, the rest of the programming is done via JavaScript which is pretty cool because JavaScript is an amazing so, uh, amazing uh, programming language. It supports OOP, it's not fully, it uh, supports partially which is amazing uh, which I really like. I, I really love JavaScript and I suggest that if you don't have a good grip, go ahead and uh, start learning. So JavaScript is really really powerful. So anyways, uh, going for the head, uh, over here we create something called, we create a first something called stage. So for those people who are involved with uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, you might uh, understand this better. Or if you work with certain uh, uh, programs where they use layers and groups and all that, you will be able to understand this quicker. But those who don't, it's okay, because it's not that uh, big a deal you can pick it up intuitively within no time so what this does is that stage is like the stage uh, where you create everything so it, it, it gives out the canvas it gives out everything for you to create so it's the first thing you need to create uh, in the JavaScript <coughs> after which you go ahead and create something called layers so you can have many layers uh, within a stage a stage is the superset and the layer is a subset so you can have layer 1, you can have layer 2 as well, so you can have layer 3. So similarly uh, you can create a number of layers, you can uh, play around with layers and it is quite helpful and uh, we'll be seeing how in other tutorials. After that you have something called shapes. So you create shapes, uh, you create one shape, two shapes or uh, you, you can create many shapes, multiple shapes depending on your requirement. So let us say you create one shape, you create another shape and after all this you are not actually done because you have to link them back to the layer. So what you do is that you have another code which says that add shape 1 to layer 1 and another code which says add shape 2 to layer 3. So let us leave layer 2 uh, over here. So these are the codes that you have to uh, uh, that you are required to write. After which, the final step is to say that add shape three. I'm sorry. You have to say that add uh, layer one and layer three. Okay, I'll do this in separate lines. So add layer one to stage, and another uh, another uh, command that says add layer two or layer three to stage again. So after this you are done uh, with the programming part. So this is essentially how you work around with Converge.js. So I know that we see a lot of lines but once you clear these out, these extra lines over here, you don't have anything to worry about. Because uh, uh, for most of the uh, basic tutorials that we will be working on, we will have just about one layer and one shape. So uh, <clears throat> soon as we uh, keep going ahead, you will be able to pick it up within no time. So you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of things. So this is how Converge.js works. So to give a brief uh, recap on what we have done. So the stage is created first and then layer 1 is uh, what is created underneath. So we have shapes in a layer which go into a layer and then after creation of all this we need to add each element to the other, link them up and we are set to go. So this is how Converge.js works and uh, in this, uh, as, I've, uh, as I've already mentioned, in this tutorial we are not going to talk about uh, the, the code yet, we will be starting off in the next video. So but uh, I have spoken about the script edition and the division element, so this is uh, very major, uh, it's, it's unless you provide this, it doesn't work. So even though it is, uh, it is uh, just 4 lines of code, it is pretty important. So I would uh, now suggest that you uh, from the next video you start off working on JS Fiddle along with me so that you get practical experience, hands on experience while we keep learning together. Alright guys thanks a lot for watching, keep watching my videos and let's get JS conquered and let's help this community with whatever new ideas that we come across. And you can follow me on Twitter as well and you can follow Anton Lavrinov on Twitter as well. I've spoken to the guy. 
and he seems to be a JS fanatic just like me. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye.